Hey, y'all. I am back. I was having technical difficulties earlier, but you guys, I have to talk to you. So I hope you guys come in soon. I'll wait to do any intro, but I just saw something on Twitter that was posted 25 minutes ago and it is just in like, this is just in breaking news and I have to know what you guys think. Okay. I am bringing this in to you guys. I was going to wait till six o'clock. And I absolutely cannot. I cannot wait. This was posted 25 minutes ago. Um, this was posted 25 minutes ago. That there was a. I, I'm speechless right now. I think. I think Diddy's going to get out. But I don't know. I'm not an attorney, so let me just let me make that very clear because I haven't seen any other creators talk about this yet. This was just posted 25 minutes ago on Inner City Press. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be reporting on this. But this says 20, 26 minutes ago, Diddy bail brief. So this is just in daily roundup Diddy docket information. Sean Combs for bail appeal to be argued November 4th claims judge made obstruction error says $50 million bail package is enough. You guys, Sean Combs for bail appeal to be argued for uh, November 4, city's judge obstruction error, $50 million is enough. What is happening? And you know what's weird about that? I, I couldn't wait. I had to like... And I'm always playing with my times, you guys. I don't know what is happening. I don't know if anyone's going to show up to my streams because I'm still playing with my times. But this, to me, is breaking news. This is breaking news. I will post this. <sighs> I'm just stunned. I am stunned. I am stunned. Just in. 26 minutes ago, just in 26 minutes ago. And I don't even know if this is going to work. Like, I'm not saying that it's going to work. I don't know, you know, but this was just posted on Twitter. And okay, so let me tell you my theory too. Um, you know, welcome to the Circus of Fuckery podcast. I am Christina, Miss Gossip Whisper, your host. Hello, how are you? I hope all of you guys had a wonderful Wednesday. We're halfway through it for those of you that are working. Uh, at home or in a building or whatever. I hope you guys are getting through it. So I cannot, first of all, 30 minutes ago. See, this is all posted the Diddy docket. I looked on Megan's page. See, I came on earlier around four o'clock and it was kind of quiet. And I was like, should I do anything? But now here we are, you guys, I can't believe this. This is just breaking news, like just in like just posted 26 minutes ago. And this is regarding Diddy's bail. Now I want to say something about this. So stay tuned. Um, I wonder, okay, so first of all, tonight's show is going to be a little bit different. I was going to read Cassie's lawsuit, but we got bigger things to worry about than that today. So Emma Crombie, right, just got indicted, right? His name is Mike Jeffries. And I was looking for his, uh, information and I went on document cloud to look at his information and I noticed that there was a couple of documents like from over time right so then I went to google and I was like trying to google you know the uh lawsuit or not lawsuit but I'm sorry indictment right and I always do pdf like I've always said and something else popped up so I was like wait a minute what's this and there was another suit I guess it's a class action suit or something because it said classaction.org. And so I have it up. I have it up. But I'm not going to talk about that. Just, just, we'll talk about that in a second, right? But this was just posted, like literally on Twitter. So this is Diddy Bail Brief, Sean Combs for Bail Appeal to be argued November 4th, claims judge made obstruction error, says $50 million bail package is enough. 
Now, I don't know if he's going to get out. I'm not an attorney. I know nothing about the law. I'm just going to say that everything on my show is alleged in, for entertainment purposes only. My, you know, opinions, my conspiracy theories, my uh, reaction, you know, all of that. You know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I don't give advice on this channel medically or legally or any of that. Go to ask your own doctors. Go ask your own attorneys. But this is interesting. That's all I'm going to say. I was trying to wait till six o'clock, which would be nine o'clock on the East coast to let everybody settle down. But okay. So this was 30 minutes ago. This is the Diddy docket right here. Let me, let me. Okay. So this says Diddy docket. Sean Combs lawyers just failed, just failed bail appeal. Sean Combs lawyers reply in two day circuit. The district court's obstruction findings were erroneous uh, a government proffer is speculative and insufficient story with brief coming. So this is what he posted. This was 30 minutes ago, right? So he started, you know, uh, reporting on the daily roundup, right? And this is just in fresh breaking news. Um, and so this is the table of contents. It could or could not be uh, available. I don't know. I'm not on. It's probably on Pacer. I'm sure. Um, but this is this one, right? And this was 30 minutes ago, right? 30 minutes ago. Um, there's nothing else that, that Mr. Lee, Matthew Lee did other than five hours ago, which would have been earlier in the day for me. Cause I'm on California. I'm on West coast. This says Diddy docket duplicates, Sean Combs and the Marriott were sued the assault and co-ed, um, but dismissed and refiled so that that was something else but this just really caught my attention because we just read the bail hearing yesterday the original so this was 38 minutes ago and then just beyond that it says diddy bail brief 34 minutes ago sean combs for bail appeal to be argued november 4th claims judge made obstruction error says 50 million dollar package bail package is enough okay so I know that everyone has been speculative that is reporting on this story, that is following this story, that is following attorneys that, you know, that are following the story. Um, no one knows what, what, what is going to happen, right? Sorry, I'm stammering because I'm like, if this man gets out, I just, it's a 12 page brief, but he has his on Patreon. And Megan has not reported on it yet because she's doing the other trial, right? She's doing the other trial. And I don't think she hasn't posted anything on this. I was hoping, uh, let's see, three hours ago, the Ninth Circuit. No, I looked at this earlier because I came on around four o'clock and I was like, mm, I don't know if anybody's going to be around. And it was kind of crickets. And then I was having def de technical difficulty with chrome and i was like uh i'll just come back and i here i am and you guys this is like important <laughs> i mean not to say maybe it's not maybe maybe i'm just misunder you know i'm not an attorney so it's like you know how like some people think ah uh, you know whatever and i i I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I really wish he's got the document, but it's on Patreon and I'm not a member of Patreon. So, uh, uh let me see if I can find the bail brief. Hold on. Let me see if I can buy the, uh, uh did he, I don't think I can, I don't think it's public yet, but let's see. Sean P Diddy bail brief today PDF. This was from, is this from now? No. Mm -mm. Nope. Um, this isn't, I don't think this is public. I'm looking right now, you guys. October 15th. Dover's just, no, these are all the lawsuits. This is not, I mean, I know Pacer would have it. And I, I know I'm, I know you guys, I know I'm going to be forced to have to like join Pacer. I know I am, but I don't see any outlets bail brief. Let me see. Let me just do that. Hold on one second. October 
20, what's today? The 23rd, 2024. I'm looking it up on Google. One month. See, there's nobody reporting on it yet. Latest on Diddy, Forbes. One day. Nope. 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 I feel like Inner City Press, man, he is on it. I just wish I knew what this said so we could read it. Oh, my God. I so wish I knew what this said so we could read this. I was looking. Uh, if you were wondering what I was doing, this is what I was doing. Here, let me take you to the page. I was actually looking at, I was on Google, and I was looking. Um, hold on. Dude, I was, hold on. See, I was looking for the brief. So the way that I do it, you know, as I just did Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy Combs. Oh, I didn't do Combs. Oops. Combs. Oops. I forgot the B. Dude, I don't know. I wish I was an attorney. <laughs> Latest news on Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy Combs one day ago. P. Diddy's appeal is expected. Is this it? Let's see if this is it. Hold on. Let's see if Facebook has something for us. Let's listen to this. Hold on one second. This was six o'clock this morning, though. Maybe it took place this morning. Hold on. Let me. Can you see that Facebook page? Let's an array of sex charges. Live to our U.S. correspondent, Jonathan Kersley in L.A. John, the hearing has just started. Oh, he's there. Okay. U.S. rapper Sean Diddy Combs has just entered a Manhattan courtroom. He is expected to appeal the decision to deny bail after he'd pleaded not guilty to an array of sex charges. Live to our U.S. correspondent Jonathan Kersley in L.A. John, the hearing has just started. Yeah, it has. And essentially, the U.S. attorney is outlining its reasons why they believe that Sean Diddy Combs, the rapper, should be held in federal detention while he awaits trial on those serious charges. Uh, he was slapped with yesterday trafficking as See, well this as is racketeering September. charges. This is not right. A magistrate yesterday denied him bail despite uh, his team putting up a bond of $71 million Australian dollars. Essentially, the magistrate it. agreed with think. prosecutors that he was a flight risk, a danger to others. And we understand he's been held in a special housing unit separated from this other prisoners it. inside a detention facility in Bro I don't think this is it. Hold on. See, because I was looking, if you guys can see what I'm seeing, it says right here, see this says Facebook today, but it says October 23rd. It, that's not it. That can't be it. News. I don't think anybody's reported on it yet. I don't think anybody's reported on it yet. I told you that, remember, there was a court date this morning at uh, 9 o'clock, and I told you that I would be, like, on it. And I've been on Twitter all day, like, making sure that I'm not missing anything. Bail brief. Uh, what is it? Hearing? Was it a hearing thing? Or was it a filing I don't think it was. See, if this is all two weeks, none of this stuff is new. Ten hours ago. Oh yeah, Diddy's kids are coming out with a with a um, what's it called? A reality show. I don't know what those kids are doing. I'm telling you right now, it is the circus of fuckery everywhere. It's driving me nuts. I don't even understand. All right. Um. I don't know. I don't. I'll. I feel like I, I'm putting myself on the screen for a second. Hold on. Let me go back into Twitter because um, I'm going to show you like this is the Twitter tweet, right, that I just saw that made me like I was trying to hold off. I was trying to hold off going live until 6. It's 5.37 here, my time. And I was like, I'll just wait. Everybody's getting off work. They're not home yet. They're not settled. They're not, blah, blah, you know. And then I saw this and it was right after it was posted. It was 15 minutes. Now it's 42 minutes. If you can see that. And it says, did he bail brief Sean Combs for bail appeal to be argued November 4th claims judge made obstruction error says $50 million bail package is enough. Now, the reason why I keep repeating myself on that is because we just saw the Amacrombie and Fitch case and he was indicted, right? Uh, Mike, whatever his name is. I'm going to go over his stuff in a minute. Just give me a second. But he got out on, he presented a package of $10 million and he got out. 
they released him. And I wondered if that would affect Diddy's third, you know, like three times the charm or three, you know, or strike three, you're out, right? Like, that's the thing. So I don't know the difference though, right? Because I think they have to determine like what's happening, you know, with um, Mike, what's his, what's his freaking name? Mike, somebody he's Amacrombie and Fitch. I didn't even know anybody wore Amacrombie and Fitch anymore. It's like, that's an eighties thing. Like the gap, you know what I mean? But he, this was everything. See, he has the table of contents and everything here, but it's on his Patreon. And Megan is d doing the trial of young. She's doing a rapper trial. And so she does upload the documents to document cloud, or she does usually show them on her, on her, um, Twitter page, but she's been, she's busy. Like, I don't think, I don't think she's updated anything. See, this was October 21st. There have been a lot of new filings, which we went over yesterday and I don't see anything from her. I do not see anything from her. Like in terms of, wait, what's this? No, this was three hours ago. No, this is like, this is not anything Diddy related. See, she's covering this trial. So it's like, we're not going to get anything from her. I don't think like right off the cuff, you know, like right hot off the press kind of thing. I don't think we're going to get anything from her when it comes to Diddy. I mean, we did yesterday, but it was late in the day. And Mr. Lee, Mr. Matthew Lee, which he'll tell us tomorrow, like he'll do his daily vlog, right? This is Megan's page. Um, he'll do his daily vlog and he'll let us know what that means. But when I saw it, I was like, that's nuts. Like, I don't know. I, I, I just know that anything that's related to Abercrombie and Fitch, I'm going to show you right now why I'm nervous about it. I'm just going to say it like, I'm going to be so mad. Like just as an, as a spectator, I'm going to be really mad if they let him out, but you know, it is what it is. But see, this is the last thing she reported on Twitter, but let's go ahead. And, uh, there's an article I want to show you guys. It's right here. Hold on. I was looking at the, let me get out of Twitter. Hold on. Just give me, give me a second. I'm going to, and I'm going to tell you why I'm, I'm thinking that I think, I don't know. I'm not an attorney. Okay. So don't quote me because I don't, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I really don't not legally, but there's an article that I saw and I, the first time I was on, I had it up and ready and I should have saved it, but I didn't. And this one, here's the article. Okay. I found one on PBS that I feel like is really effective, but there is one on the actual, um, website. It's like, it's not news nation. Oh, it is news nation. That's where I was. Hold on one second. I'm looking at, there was an actual like article on what's his name. What is this guy's name? Mike Jeffries. Hold on. I'm going to show you this, this actual Mike Jeffries. Hold on just one second. And I was looking, I was also looking for photos of uh, Sean PDD, Puff Daddy Combs and Mr. Jeffries because they were both in fashion. And then I thought to myself, okay, Mike Jeffries, the guy that, that the CEO or the, of Amacrombie and Fitch, he's a lot older than Diddy. He's a lot older than Diddy. But with that said, I, I, since they were both in fashion, I was like, I wonder if there's a photo of the two of them together, right? And the reason why I'm saying that is in a second, I'm going to show you why. But uh, because they operate very, very, very similarly. And that's why, that's the only reason why I'm bringing that up. But let me show you here. Mike Jeffries, uh, indictment. Hold on. There was a suit I was looking at that came up when I was trying to find the indictment. And then there was also a article. So there's one from the United States government that I'm going to bring up because this was one day ago when it happened. So I'm going to bring up this formal because, you know, like if we get our information, I want to I want to show you like the actual information. Right. Because this is from New York. So I want to show you that because I feel like that's important. And y'all, I don't, I don't really know who this guy is. I mean, I, obviously I know Amacrombie and Fitch. I'm in my, when I was in high school, they were like a big deal, like the gap or whatever, but hold on. I had my whole docket ready and now I'm going to have to shift all my tabs. Ah, I'm going to have to shift my tabs now. 
because I had a, a bunch of shit I wanted to show you. But OK, so let me show you this article. I'm going to bring you in right now. We're going to read this article first and then we're going to look at the news outlets to make sure it's matching because you kind of have to you kind of have to like make sure that your information, you know, so. I think. OK, here it is. So this is the article I'm looking at right here, right? This is the United States Attorney's Office. Now, there was a press conference, apparently, in regards to this, right? So this is former CEO of Amacrombie and Fitch and two other inv individuals charged with S trafficking and interstate pr prostitution. I'm just going to say it. Um, and then it says defendants allegedly uh, arranged for dozens of men to travel to New York and, hotel and hotels around the world to S events. Now, when we think about that, right, that's very similar to Diddy. So I know that people are trying to connect this to Diddy and I, I probably think, you know, like behind the curtain, it probably is connected to Diddy. But if you think about it, in my opinion, I'm thinking it's backwards. Like people are like as if Diddy, Diddy was the leader. I, I don't think so. Not at all. Because this guy is way older. How, let me see. How old is this guy? Let me see. Does it say in the article? It might say, hold on. Let me just go over here while you're looking at that article real quick. Mike Jeffries age hold on let me just see how old this dude is age he's 80 years old this guy is 80 years old let me just show you before we before we read the rest of this you guys have to hear about this i was i'm a diddy docket you know update di daily roundup person but i do have to show you this so immediately, right, you know, people are trying to connect this. And and, and again, I, I think this happens everywhere. It's not like it doesn't. I mean, like I said, a friend of mine skilled me on um, or educated me on HEF and all this kind of stuff, right? So in the fashion industry, I don't, I don't think it's odd. I really don't. But I want to show you like how old this guy is. So because immediately, like I said, a lot of people are saying he's very similar um, to Diddy. Hold on one second before I bring you in. I have to make sure. Okay, yeah, that's it. I, I had to move my windows around because I have two screens. One's small and one's big. Hold on one second. Okay, I expanded that one. Okay, here it is. Here's the guy. Okay, so here he is. So he's 80 years old. He was born in 1944. All right, so we're talking Hef kind of guy or whatever. So there's that, right? So he's been in the business for a very, very long time. Amacrombie and Fitch has been around forever, right? So there it is. So that's how old he is. So now let's go back to the article. Let me get rid of this tab so it's not displaying anymore. But it, oh, let me let me read this to you as well real quick. Actually here, before we move on to the article real quick, let me show you this real, real fast. So we did already look at that. But on the right hand side, see there it says Michael Stratton Stanton. Sorry, Michael Stanton Jeffries is an American businessman who was chairman of CEO of the clothing retailer Amacrombie and Fitch from 1992 to 2014. He was born in 1944. He's 80 years old. Um, his partner is Matthew Smith. So he already is, you know, a person that has a male partner just saying, um, Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I, I stand corrected. My apologies. His partner in the business was Matthew Smith. His spouse is Susan Marie Isabel Hansen. She was born in 1971. She's my age, actually. She's very young. And then they have one child, and um, that's what it says. And then it shows his parents. Okay, so that's just a little bit about Abercrombie guy, right? So there's that. So let me just get out of that. And again, I have to toggle, so I have to go back and forth, so please forgive me. But we're actually, so what we're doing is we're doing a comparison against um, Amacrombie and Fitch and Diddy and what this has to do with the bail. So if you're just coming in, you're just peeking in, there was a post on Twitter saying that um, th that in court this morning, Diddy's bail is going to be argued because they're saying that the judge made an error and that the $50 million bail um, package offer is enough. That's what they're saying. That doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen, but that's what was posted just a moment ago. Okay. So there's that, right? And we just, we just learned that Mr. Michael Jeffries of Amacrombie and Fitch is 80 years old. Okay. So that's where we are. Cause there was someone that popped in and, and is watching. So thank you so much. So let's hope that our room gets bigger because I really want to talk about this. I was like, wait a minute. And I just stumbled across something. So that's why I'm sharing it. All right. So I'm going to bring this article back in.
and we're going to read it. There was a press conference. I did not see it. I just want to let you guys know. But the um, anyway, there's three people involved in this indictment, apparently, or that are, you know, allegedly. Um, well, actually, there's three people being charged, first of all. Now, again, when I went to go look up the indictment to talk about it tonight, I just Googled it and I it, I didn't see it. Um, something else came up in a sponsored ad, which was a class action suit. So there was something already previously in the works against these three people. And the reason why I'm going to show you that lawsuit in a few minutes is because there's photos in there. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of lay it. We're laying a foundation here, right? So a lot of people are saying, you know, they all operate the same, this and that and the other. Maybe Diddy learned his ways from the fashion industry. Who knows? Allegedly, we don't know that, right? But this says a 16 count indictment was unsealed today in federal court in central uh, Islip, I believe, charging a former Amacrombie Fitch company chief executive officer, Michael Jeffries, along with Matthew Smith and um, James Jacobson. Now, keep those two two names in in intact because they show up before. So this is not something that's brand new, I've noticed. Because I glanced at the document and I was like, wait a minute, the document, whoa, whoa, whoa. So that's why, that's the only reason why I'm talking about this because I just was like, wait a minute, there's a lot of similarities here, which is not, abs it's not abnormal for it to be right. It's not, it's really not. But at the same time, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I got kind of revved up about it because I'm like, if this is an example for Diddy to get out, I'm going to be pissed off just as a person observing all of this. Okay. Now let me just say that before I finish this article, remember this man, I believe if I'm not mistaken, was already out. They offered a $10 million package and he was released. So I have a feeling just as a spectator, as a circ, you know, someone in the circus of fuckery that they're that Sean Pitty, P. Diddy Puff Daddy Combs's attorneys are watching. That's all I'm going to say. Cause I'm not an attorney. I don't know the way it works. I don't know how they're going to do anything, but I have a feeling that if this guy was let out on $10 million and Sean P. Diddy Puff Daddy Combs offered 50 million, but let's just, let's keep things intact and let's not get too, you know, off track because remember there were other things when we read the bond hearing verbatim yesterday that there were other concerns, right? It wasn't just a flight risk or whatever. It was that he was harassing people and there were certain things happening. Okay. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about this particular case, but we're relating this to Amacrombie because it just kind of a light switch went off. And I went, I thought to myself, I wonder if they're going to use any of this or, you know, like put their heads together. And again, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know if this is real or not, but in my mind, I was like, okay, this guy's charged for almost the same, the same thing, sort of not the identically same thing, but very similar. And he's out. Okay. He's out. So, and I'm going to show you the article in just a second that shows him leaving. But anyways, all right. So, but there are three people remember involved in this, in this scandal, in the circus, the shit show is, which is Michael Jeffries along with Matthew Smith and James Jacobson. So like I said, keep those three names in mind. And then this says with, with S trafficking and engaging in inter, interstate prostitution, same thing that's very similar to what Mr. Combs is being charged with. It's not this exactly the same, but I, I do believe from what we've read, it is very similar, allegedly. Um, or at least from what I'm understanding, if I'm if I have it incorrect, please let me know. But this says the indictment alleges that between two okay, so this is the indictment alleges that between December 2008 and March 15, I'm sorry, and March 2015, Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson used uh, a combination of force, fraud, coercion, and traffic to traffic men while operating a ring, an enterprise, same thing, right? All three defendants were arrested this morning. That was yesterday on the 22nd of uh, October, 2024, which would have been Tuesday. Uh, Jeffries and Smith are scheduled to make their initial appearances this afternoon in federal court, which I do believe they already did that. That was yesterday afternoon. And then it goes on to kind of give, you know, specifics and so on and so on. And then um, it says today indictment highlights the alleged abhorrent behavior of Michael 
Jeffries, uh, Matthew Smith, and James Jacobson, the defendants alleged preyed on hopes and dreams of their victims and exploiting, abusing, and silencing them to fulfill their own desires, right? Very similar to Mr. Combs. Um, and then it says, with insidi insidious, right, secret intentions, the case is yet another example of individuals using their wealth, power, and reputation to manipulate and control others. The FBI and our partners won't allow this criminal activity to go on, yada, yada. All right, so this is, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, skip this one paragraph right here just because it talks about S trafficking and all that it's, you know, and that this, that like, this is like about the U.S. Attorney's Office and, you know, like how they're partnered with the FBI and all that stuff. So that's not really necessary, but, but this is the important part right here because I'm going to show you something in just a second. So this says... Uh, from approximately 1992. Okay, so let's stop that for a second and let's think about Mr. Combs and his information in his indictment talks about 1991, I believe it is. And again, this is not in relation, but we're comparing notes, I guess, is what we're like, let's pretend we're writing a thesis, I guess, you know what I mean? And all of this stuff is ongoing. It's an ongoing investigation and so forth. And both of these parties, if you, um, if you know at, to present have not been charged in a court of law and convicted, I, I guess say, I shouldn't say charge. I should say convicted of the crimes that they are being charged with is fair. So there's that. So this is approximately 1992 to 2014, which is his, his entire, um, his entire time with this company as the CEO. And a, it, he was a fashion clothing retailer that owned and operated retail stores around the world. Smith and Jeffrey's life partner. Uh, the indictment alleges that Jacobson was employed by Jeffries and Smith to recruit, interview, and hire men to perform commercial S acts for Jeffries and Smith. So that's to me, very interesting. It's just, it's just, Wow, the web is webbing, in my opinion. Um, so it also talks about from uh, from approximately here's some more right here from approximately 2008 to 2015, Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson, together with others, operated an international s trafficking ring or enterprise, if you will. Uh, Jeffries and Smith not only relied on their financial resources and Jeffrey's power as CEO of Amicrombie, but also in numerous, on numerous others, including Jacobson's Jacobson and a network of employees, which is also very similar to the Diddy stuff, right? It just is. I mean, it, it just point blank period is it's not the same, but it's similar, right? You know, it's the function. They can't do it themselves. There's other people that are involved, right? With that. So, and it's all for their own pleasure, whatever the case may be. So this entire article is going to go over, you know, everything that they're being accused of in bullet points. Like um, it says employed. It says this part right here. I'll just read these bullet points. The indictment alleges that Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson used coercive, fraudulent and deceptive tactics in connection with their S trafficking and prostitution venture. For example, among other things, Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson and others acting as their direction employed a referral system and interview process that did not inform men of the details of the S events before they attended, including the full extent and nature of the s activity that would be required of the men at the S events. So, and then this has ca uh, caused men to believe that attending the S events could yield modeling opportunities. So it's the same kind of, you know, do you want to be a model? Do you want to be famous? Do you want to be in on the runway? What have you, right? So all these bullet points are, you know, and it says right here on the, on the bottom one, just so you guys know, it says one more, on more than one occasion, Jeffries and Smith directed others to inject, inject, and personally inject men with an, uh, um, uh, enhancement to their private, uh, inducing substance. So it was to enhance their performance and for the purpose of causing the men to engage in S acts, the men were incapable or unwilling to engage in. 
So they were required. Same kind of, you know, operation as Diddy. S similar, right? They were, they had to, they had to partake in that, right? And so, and they're also saying that this is, that this particular charge, same as Diddy, um, it carries, it says the defendants each face a maximum sentence of life in prison and a mandatory minimum sentence of 15 years imprisonment. If convicted of the interstate prostitution charges, the defendants face a maximum of 20 years. Okay, so there's that. All right, so just keep that in mind. That's the formal um, uh, article, right? Okay, so that's from directly from the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York. Okay, so that's important just to know as far as this hot topic right now. But what's even more interesting is now let's cover the outlets, right? And so I'm going to stop the screen and I'm going to show you this other article I have up. Again, I have to toggle, so forgive me. Um, okay, so the next one is this article, I believe, right here. Yeah. So this is the PBS article that I saw. Um, and this, the headline is, you know, the former Amacrombie and Fitch CEO partner arrested on S charges, blah, 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 right? But down here, was this the right article I wanted to show you? Yeah, this, I'm going to read this one and I'm going to try to improvise with my words. So former Amacrombie and Fitch, Mike Jeffries, ha it, ha it, bleh, sorry, I'm so revved up about this. Like, I'm like, this can't be happening, but it's only because I'm going to show you what the lawsuit looks like. So this is former Amacrombie and Fitch CEO, Mike Jeffries, his romantic partner and a third man were arrested Tuesday on charges of luring dozens of men into S parties held around the world sometimes by dangling the promise of modeling for the clothing retailer. Jeffrey's partner, Matthew Smith, okay? So we just read, what's interesting about this, right, is that, remember how when I first told you about him and I showed you on the on the um, Google about his age and stuff and I apologize because it said his partner, Matthew Smith, but then I said he had a spouse so I'm the way that they're making this sound is that it's not just his business partner. It, 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 it's his partner. I don't know if that's the truth that maybe I'm misreading it, but the way that they're presenting it is almost like they were, they were together, but not like out, out, if that makes sense. Okay. Because they were in it together, right? So it only leads you to believe allegedly by speculation only that they had some kind of relationship other than business, but that's just me. So this says that um, that um, Jeffrey's partner, Matthew Smith, and their employee, J James Jacobson, operated in an international S trafficking and, prost and prostitution business from 2008 to 2015. Um, now, this is a little bit later because the other thing on the federal website we just read was from 1992. Remember that? To 2014. So I don't know if they were just covering like the time that he was employed or ran Amacrombie because these these dates to me are a little bit different unless my eyes are just kind of not aligning. But um, using Jeffrey's status, wealth and a web of household staffers to fulfill the couple's eschewal desires and keep it all secret, according to the indictment, unsealed in the federal court in Brooklyn. So from what I understand, this is not in the same area of New York that Mr. Combs is in. This is a different area. It's east, I guess. And um, sh Mr. Combs is in a different area of New York, apparently. But that's what this says. So the charges follow sexual misconduct allegations made in lawsuits and the media from young people who said Jeffrey's promised modeling work and then pressed them into S acts. Jeffrey's attorney, Brian Bieber, I find that very funny. His name is Bieber, but um, said by email, he would respond in detail to the allegations after the indictment is unsealed and when appropriate, but plans to do so in the courthouse. And then it says Jeffries and Smith were arrested in Florida uh, and were due to make an initial court appearance Tuesday afternoon in West Palm Beach. Jacobson was arrested in Wisconsin and due in court in St. Paul, Minnesota, Brooklyn-based U.S. attorney uh, Brian P. 
Peace, I think. I don't know. He probably announced his name in the press conference. I didn't watch it. Uh, Jeffrey Smith and Jacobson are charged with S trafficking and uh, running a, you know, prostitution ring or whatever. According to the indictment, they paid for dozens of men to travel within the U.S. and internationally to engage in acts and stuff. Um, men in New York, hotels in England, France, Italy, Morocco, and St. Bart's. The indictment describes estual bacchanals. I, I think that's how you say it. I don't know. In which the recruited men were given uh, substances, lubricants, uh, you know, protection. Um, what do what, um, what's that called? Uh, um, I can't think of it right now. What do they give kids? They call um, contraceptives, I guess, costumes, costumes, S toys, and sometimes the induction of enhancement. So a male part enhancement injections, injections. Okay. That cause painful hour long reactions. Wow, that's crazy. And then it says the defendants led men to believe that attending these events would help their careers, including their chances of getting Amicrami uh, modeling gigs and so forth. And then um, the BBC investigation included a dozen men who described being at the events and then they told what happened. And I'm going to let you know, like right now, I'm going to show you the lawsuit and, and see. It says a lawsuit filed in New York last year accused Emma Crombie of following Jeffries to run an S ring during a 22 year tenure or tenure, no, a 22 year tenure. It said that Jeffries had modeling scouts scouring the internet for victims and that some prospective models became S trafficking victims at the time Bieber declined to comment. So, and then it says Amercrombie and Fitch tra traces its roots to a hunting and outdoors goods store that was founded in 1892. And, uh, and then it says after 2008 financial crisis, the subsequent recession, Amercrombie and Fitch's popularity started to fade away. Okay. So that's this article, right? But I'm going to show you like another headline that's in reference to this hearing, which I'm so scared about this hearing, you guys. All right, let me get rid of this PBS and then let me get rid of this um, federal um, article. And then, okay, so this is what I want to show you. This is from News Nation. This is from News Nation. Uh, is this it? I think this is it. Yeah. So this one right here says, this is what makes me nervous. Ex Amicrombie CEO posts $10 million bond in S trafficking case. He posted a $10 million bond and was released. Okay, Mr. Sean P. Diddy Puff Daddy Combs offered 50 million and was, de and was rejected and declined. So I'm wondering as a spectator how that's going to reflect on their argument on um no, November 4th. I'm just I'm so interested in this. Let's read this. This was News Nation, so someone was commenting on this. So let's go ahead and just watch this. It's only three minutes. So he got out on a 10 million dollar bond. So just keep in mind, Mr. Diddy, Sean P. Diddy Puff Daddy Combs is offering 50 million and got rejected. 50 million, but this guy got out on 10. Now there are two different cases, two different scenarios, very similar charges, not convicted, incarcerated, both of them. Or no, Sean P. Diddy Puff Daddy Combs is incarcerated and this guy didn't. Now, do you think, I'm going to ask you guys just point blank period. Do you think it's, do you think that Mr. Combs is going to bring up race? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. And like I said, I don't think that this, I mean, in terms of letting them out, I'm thinking to myself, we read that bond hearing verbatim. And this is the reason why I wanted to read it because we needed to know what the judge said. We needed to know what the, um, what the lawyers said, the attorneys were saying, what they were arguing, what they said. And I did that whole thing script wise, right? Yesterday, just yesterday. And I'm so glad I did that because they rejected his bond. So now this guy, right? 
$10 million bond. Now he's 80 years old. I don't know, maybe age. I don't think that that matters. Not when you think of Cosby, but I'm just saying, or even, um, what's the other guy, the me too guy, N you know, even when you think of that, but he posted a $10 million bond. And there, it's saying there are 15, 15 male victims listed in the indictment. Only 15. I do believe the lawsuit states more, but we'll see. And then, because there, remember, this is all based on a class action lawsuit from 2023. And they make that very clear. So let's listen to this real quick and we'll talk about it afterwards. Let me go ahead and make this screen bigger so we can hear what exactly is going on with, in this case and how it's in relation to Diddy. I'm just very curious about this. I'm very curious. For people at this. Today, an explosive 16 count indictment unsealed federal court court today, charging former. Sorry, it's. There's so many. Uh. Abercrombie and Fitch CEO Mike Jeffries, his British romantic partner Matthew Smith, and a third man, James Jacobs, with criminal charges of sex trafficking involving dozens of men, luring them into sex parties around the world and often promising them modeling jobs. The case is being handled by the Office of the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, which has been working with the FBI and the New York Police Department Special Victims Unit. Here's the spokesperson for the prosecution detailing the charges. The defendants pressured the men to consume alcohol, Viagra, and muscle relaxants known as poppers during the sex events. Jeffries and Smith either directed others to inject or personally injected men with an erection-inducing substance for the purpose of causing the men to engage in sex acts when men did not or could not consent. Jeffries and Smith violated the bodily integrity of these men Joining me now is Brad Edwards, representing more than a dozen victims in a class action lawsuit. Uh, Mr. Edwards, thank you for joining me. The um, material question for people at this stage of it will be, um, what should they understand about this that made it not consensual, uh, not something that was, you know, by arrangement, whether there was uh, undue influence or not? Thanks, Grace. Thanks for having me. Um, so there's nothing consensual about it. These were aspiring young models who were sought out and promised uh, to be Abercrombie models, essentially. They were all forced to wear Abercrombie clothes to events that were decorated as if it was an Abercrombie store. They were given an interview with the CEO of Abercrombie, that being Mike Jeffries, made to sign NDAs, told that if they ever disclosed this, that bad things would happen to them, reputationally, financially, potentially physically. And then they were taken into a room in the most heinous, of sexual of, of, and abusive crimes committed against them. And this went on for over a decade. The power disparity couldn't have been any bigger. And anyone at that time looking to be in the modeling industry would know that if they said anything about this, their career as an aspiring model would have been over. There was nothing from, from any of the victims we've talked to, nothing consensual about any aspect of this. What are the ages? So the ages at the time range between about 19 and 25 on average. Um, does so? How do you make that case? How do you make the case that because they were adults, right? Uh, the age of contract, let's say, is 18. Uh, yeah. What makes this different than you know immoral? Sh sure. Well. Certainly, when we represented the victims of Jeffrey Epstein, it was very different, right, because they were minors. But in the case of, of individuals who are not minors, then the elements of sex trafficking are that force, fraud, or coercion is used to cause an individual to engage in uh, commercial sex. And in this case, the, the false promise of an Abercrombie modeling gig is, is the, the ultimate fraud. Uh, mm -hmm. coercion through the NDAs and the threat of harm, that is the coercive tactics that were used to force co co commercial sex. So if force, fraud, or coercion are used to, to cause someone to engage in commercial sex, that is sex trafficking by definition. Your life sounds pretty great. Don't let a buzz ruin it. Okay, I have to get past this ad. I wonder if it's going to make me watch it. 
I don't know if it's going to make me watch it. Let me see. Is that it? Is that all there? I think that might be it. Okay. So now we saw that. I, I, I think it's over. I think it's over. Yeah, because they go into Diddy after that. Okay, so hold on one second. Let me let me get out of that. Okay, so now I have, so we know now that I was hoping they would say something about the dude getting out on $10 million, but they didn't say that. But I did show you the headline of that one article, right, about um, him getting out. Okay, so here is the, the lawsuit they're talking about. So I'm going to show you right now. Hold on one second. Um, C. No, hold on one second. Is it this one? Yeah. Okay. So this is the lawsuit that they're talking about. It's a trigger warning lawsuit. Oh, shoot. Never mind. That's Cassie. I was going to read Cassie's. Hold on one second. Wait, where's that? Where's the, the lawsuit? Here it is. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let me put Cassie on the end because that was on my docket. Sorry about that. All right. I got it now. This. No, that's still Cassie. Hold on. Oh, it's because I have to go out. Okay. Sorry. I had it ready and I have to toggle. Like I said before, darn it. Okay. Um, C A. I think it's this one. Right? Yeah, it's this one. This one doesn't have a trigger warning on it though. So this is the lawsuit from 10, 27, 2023. All right. And let me try to, let me try to enhance it a little bit more. So this is the allegation. So I just want to read the allegation during all times relevant to this complaint. Jeffries was an extraordinary wealthy man with multiple residences in United States. So that was very similar to what Diddy, very similar to Diddy. Beginning in, in at least 1992 and continuing through 2014, Jeffries knowingly established and ran a S trafficking venture and conspiracy in violation of this code. As part of the venture, Jeffries, in his role as CEO of Amacrombie and for the benefit of Amacrombie, used means of force, threats, force, used means of force, Threats of force, fraud, coercion, abuse of legal process, and a combination of these means to young men from all over the world to engage in commercial S acts and actually abuse, S abuse. Jeffries and others also conspired to violate, and then that's the penal code, in creating and maintaining this network of victims in multiple states and in other countries to actually abuse and exploit. Jeffrey, Jeffries worked and conspired with others, including Amacrombie employees and associates who facilitate his conduct by among and among other things, recruiting victims, communicating with victims, providing gifts, transportation, hotels, and clothing to victims, coercing victims, and scheduling their S acts by Jeffries at his New York City mansion and his Hamptons mansion. So it makes you wonder if people were, I don't know why, but my mind this work, works this way, but it makes me wonder if people were like, um, what's that called? Like house hopping. You know what I mean? Like it just, because, and the only reason why I say that is because Mr. Combs also, excuse me, had some of his white parties in the Hamptons. So to me, very interesting, right? Anyway, Jeffries and his co-conspirators used Amacrombie's corporate wealth and the wealth that Jeffries had amassed, right, or amassed as a result of his employment Amacrombie to lure and transport victims to his homes for purported modeling castings. Jeffries used Amacrombie corporate money, travel benefits, and cash to facilitate and effectuate the S trafficking venture against this class. So I don't, it didn't say, I don't think we're on 115. So keep that in mind. Let's see. How many, 
how many plaintiffs are there? Let's see. I mean, uh, how many people? It's a class action, but it, defendants, hold on. How many? It doesn't say. It says jury trial demanded. Hold on. This is a civil suit, by the way. How many people? It doesn't say. It just says defendants. It doesn't say how many. It's a class action, but it doesn't say how many, or at least not to my knowledge. Anyways. Okay, so let's go back to 115. 115, 115. We were at 115. See, it shows pictures. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you right now. Um, where did I? Parties. David Bradbury in the is a U.S. citizen. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but what did I? I think I was at factual, right? Factual. This is why I, I hate to jump around. Um, one second. I'm trying to get back to where I was. I said 115. I wonder if I can control F. Let me see. Yeah, 115. There it is. Hey, look at that. Control F works. All right. Jeffries and his co-conspirators had per perfected a scheme for the manipulation and abuse of young men under the guise of providing them with modeling opportunities and of their dreams, becoming a Amacrombie and Fitch model. As a part of the this, this scheme, a male recruiter would approach them uh, and uh, a male recruiter would approach the men selling this opportunity, but would then require them to engage in a commercial S in commercial S with him in order to obtain the opportunity to move higher up the chain to Jeffries, the man who would make them an Amakrami model. The recruiter would then inform the young man that he was approved to the next level of the interviewing and the casting process for Amacrombie, where travel was then arranged for this prospective model to travel one of to travel to one of Jeffrey's residences to meet with Jeffrey's himself himself getting one step closer to achieving the pinnacle of a young model's dream. Once at Jeffrey's residence and before the interview with Jeffrey's, the men were required to sign a document that were not permitted to read. They were not permitted to read. What? What do you mean? How do you sign something you don't read? And I understand like they're saying, remember just a minute ago in the um, news video, they said that all these men were like between 18 and 25, but still, how do you, I mean, I guess maybe it's your upbringing, you know, like where your parents teach you don't sign anything unless you read it first or whatever. I don't know because, you know, they were hungry to be models and they wanted to be models and it's interesting. I mean, I'm only, to me, this stuff is fascinating because when my kids were really young, um, people used to compliment my kids all the time when they were young, young, young. My, my youngest had really curly hair and my, my other, my oldest had, um, like sandy brown hair and like crystal blue green eyes, you know, and he was a tot he was a child, you know, a baby and, and into toddler. And people would say, you know, you need to take them on casting calls. You need to take them on casting calls. So my husband and I took my kids on casting calls all the time. And then we signed them up for like this uh, web kind of, it's like a gallery, you know, where you sign up and then you're put into like this, like I said, like a gallery photo album kind of thing. And they look for certain people with certain looks and certain eyes and certain hair and all this kind of stuff. Right. And so for me, it's, it's interesting because it's also kind of re a reflection on like when I, I don't know how much role a parent takes in a, in a child that's, you know, 17. Cause you know, these models, even on the runway, like to today, even to date, you know, they're really young. They really are. They're like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, you know? So, and this, we're talking about runway right now. And it all starts when you take your kids on a casting call and maybe your local department store, at least in my day, you know, it was like Macy's and all these other Nordstrom's and, you know, everybody was doing these like clothing line, small little runway shows, you know, in the mall or in the department store itself. And I'm bringing this up because when the kids are, when, when young adults are five, 16, you know, really young, especially in fashion, like you're so, you don't know anything about anything. So to have these 
people um, offer these kids, even at 18 is a child to me, but to sign something that they didn't read is kind of interesting to me, but I don't know. So it kind of falls into, I guess, maybe a part, part of what my brain is thinking of is Justin Bieber as well, you know, and how young he was and stuff. But I guess it happens all the time. I mean, it really doesn't matter if it's in music, Hollywood, movies, TV, commercials, like it's the same regardless, you know, it's all the same kind of industry. But anyway, so they had to travel and they were informed that they were, if they were ever to speak about what occurred in the home, um, significant legal action would be initiated against them. So they were intimidated, you know? That's so crazy to me. Once at Jeffrey's residence and before the interview with Jeffrey's, the men were required to sign a document that they were not permitted to read that perpetratedly bound them to silence. They were informed that if they were ever to speak about what occurred in the home, significant legal action would be taken against them or in initiated. That's nuts to me. Once Jeffrey's home and trap once at Jeffrey's home and trapped in a room with Jeffrey's, he actually assaulted his victims with the assistance of Smith. Wow. So they were like a team. They were like a team. Wow. Like a Batman and Robin. This is so crazy. I mean, it's not really, but still. Often as part of this process, that's nuts. That is crazy, craziness. I can't, hold on. I got to see what Mel is saying. Hold on one second. What are you saying to me? <laughs> Gross. Yes. I'm telling you, girl. I'm telling you, I had to read it to you. I don't know what happened today, but I got low traction today. Anyways, craziness, isn't it? It's They were like a team. I still know where my kids are. <laughs> and they are grown. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And mine are in their 30s, you know? Anyway, let's move on. All right. But they were a team. And this is the class action that happened way. This thing has been brewing for a year. And that's why I wanted to bring it up in my live stream tonight because Diddy, if the, see, I, I don't know why, but I mean, just as an observer, you know, cause I'm like focusing on Diddy with my show, but I'm just saying like, if this guy got out on a $10 million bond the same day and Diddy has been rejected three times, you know? It just makes me wonder if his team are going to say something about this or, you know, bring the relevance of what, of how he got out. I don't know if that even matters or, you know, cause I'm not an attorney, but I, I had to say something about that anyways, but on this document, back to this document often, I can't believe they Batman and Robin these guys. Anyway, often as part of this process that Jeffrey's portrayed as essential for obtaining an Amacrombie modeling job. The male model was required to strip naked and to visit the groomer before arriving. So they had to get, they had to go to the spa before they could be seen, who would quite literally shave the model head to toe, including, the, including and especially the intimate private parts of the model. Crazy. Wow. After Jeffries and Smith were finished, Eschewally abusing the prospective model, Jeffries and his associates would pay the, his victims thousands of dollars in cash before leaving. And don't, don't forget these forms that they had to sign without being, I mean, to me, it is so crazy. And I know, you know, I mean, I feel like our teens and our young adults nowadays in 2024 are a lot more educated and maybe, I don't know, savvy possibly. But I also feel like it's still traditionally, as a traditional person, I think how you, you know, how you raise your kids, their grandparents, yourself, 
all that stuff and the wisdom that they that are shared that's shared with them as they grow up is how they become fine-tuned and detail oriented and stuff like that but at the same time like i cannot believe that and this 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 kind of is this kind of is the kind of culture as well that like i don't understand cults i'm just saying it but it, to have these young adults presented with a form that they absolutely 100% were not allowed to read let alone they were required to sign floors me. It just absolutely floors me. So, but I don't know, you know, maybe they were just hungry for a modeling career and they, they said, okay, okay, whatever you say, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, like, I just feel like, I don't know. It just depends. You know, thank goodness in the early two thousands, I feel like we were more into the flex, you know, like that whole MTV Cribs lifestyle type thing was a lot more appealing than it is today. I, I'm so glad that at least today we're more into authenticity or like organic, you know, things and realistic things. It seems like, I mean, I feel like the flex still has some power, but it doesn't have, have as much power as it did before. But anyways, let's continue. After Jeffries and Smith were finished, eschewing, eschewing, abusing the prospective model Jeffries and his associates would pay his victims thousands of dollars before leaving. So they got cash. There was no way to trace it. And I guess maybe back then there weren't cell phones or something. Like there was no video, no photos, stuff like that. Interesting. Maybe they weren't allowed. Because if you know, Diddy took the phones. So maybe they weren't allowed regardless, like when this was. Because this goes all the way up to 2014. 2008, all the way up to 2018, I think it said. Um, but, but, but it looked like his employment was 1991 to 2014. But I think earlier in the article that we read the, um, news nation or PBS that was up to 2015, excuse me. So anyway, Jeffries was skilled at asserting, asserting, uh, asserting, right. His victims, great, greatest aspirations and targeted those fears and aspirations to coerce and trap his victims into performing S acts and to be subjected to sexual abuse. Sometimes I feel like, I feel like this might be, I don't know, this is kind of, it's kind of ties with Diddy to be honest. Cause I mean, think about it. These kids, these men, these young boys, cause it, it's, there's no mention of females at all. The, these boys were actually had to have an injection into their private area literally an injection so that scares the shit out of me like and then they were trapped which reminds me of the the girl that talks about the white party where she was trapped in the house and she couldn't get out anyways all right among other things jeffries actually abused his many victims and caused his victims to engage in commercial s acts specifically s acts for which his victims received things of value including money promises of career advancement and promises that Jeffries would hire them to work as Abercrombie models. These promises were a quid pro quo for S acts that occurred. We're going to see some pictures here in a minute. Because Jeffries was the CEO of Abercrombie and he and his co-conspirators were giving his victims access to Abercrombie clothing and promising to meet with Abercrombie's official photographer, the Abercrombie S trafficking scheme gave off the legitimate appearance for male victims that the potential for them to become an Abercrombie model truly existed. So this was kind of like, in my opinion, very similar to um, to Cassie, where Diddy was promising her a music album, and then you know, he would say, oh, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. And then he never produced the album like that, you know, but yet she had to continue to be, to do these things, these vile things. Right. And okay. So you said, Mel said, cause he doesn't have weapons or record like Diddy. Okay. And then you also said they all took notes from each other. They all knew each other. Yeah. I, I really believe that also. I, I just want to say that I, I do believe that as well. I do believe that as well. And I think that, I think that Diddy, you know, cause everybody was talking about the music industry and I think, you know how, like, even when you see Gene Deal talk about Diddy and his behavior and how he was a different person once he ended up getting like bigger and bigger and bigger, I think the exposure to the alcohol industry, to the fashion industry, 
and even probably music and TV or anything that he got involved in, he started to kind of just acquire like a club, you know, of some sort. And all these people that just literally had secrets and I don't know, um, tips and tricks and ways to get around things and stuff like that. So I, I believe that as well. I really do. Anyway, because Jeffries was CEO of Amacrombie and he and his co-conspirators were given his victims access to all of this stuff, right? Jeffries provided things of value to his victims in order to coerce them and engage in S acts with him and others. So not only just them, but more people, right? Which is very similar to the Diddy thing. I'm sure they're probably going to make a documentary about this dude too. As one means of coercing victims to engage in S in commercial S acts, Jeffries and his co-conspirators would give his victims money to stay quiet about assaults. Uh, in addition to coercing commercial S acts of the, of his victims, Jeffries also com committed coer coercive S offensives um, against them and defined in, as defined in New York penal law, blah, 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 as described throughout. Okay. So here it is throughout around 1992 and 2014, Amacrombie S trafficking venture recruited, solicited, enticed, harbored, obtained, provided, and transported dozens and likely over a hundred victims to cause them to engage in commercial S acts with Jeffries and others. So yeah, it was just like one big freaking O-R-G-Y. Uh, Jeffries recruited, solicited, enticed, harbored, obtained, provided, and transported his victims to cause them to engage in commercial S acts in ways that were in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce, including using means, interstate communications, such as cell phones. So it's very interesting about the cell phone thing because, well, I guess the difference also, you know, of this dude and Diddy, or because it's just to me, it's like it's just crazy that they were Batman and Robin. They were a Batman and Robin team and Diddy. But I feel like now that we're listening to this case, you know, sort of versus or balanced, you know, against Diddy's case, it seems like Diddy, Diddy to me as an observer, because I didn't, I know, I knew of his career, I knew the groups he was managing, but I didn't know much about him specifically, or I was never a fan of his, to be honest. But what's very interesting about his case is that he seemed naturally like a very paranoid person. So it makes sense to me how he would make sure that all of his um, encounters with people were recorded, hidden devices, audio devices, and stuff like that. So this guy, this Batman and Robin team, doesn't seem, even though they have, they provided these people with cell phones and this and that, they, it sounds like they had control. So they were brilling in these teenage kids that wanted to be models or whatever, which is like the oldest book in time, right? Because in our day, anyone that was born, you know, before the 80s, I guess, knows that they just would scout. You know what I mean? Like they would just scout. So it's like in our day, you know, it wasn't like, the millennials, right. That had all these electronics. It was more like just everything was done in person. And when cell phones came along, I don't think anybody was like very into recording and photographing and stuff like that. I think they hired professional photographers and stuff like that. So everything was like kind of recorded through those means. So even if they would have provided these kids with the latest functions or electronics of the day, of the times, I feel like they were in control of that anyway. So I don't, I mean, I think it's possible if the kids, I don't know, it's just kids today are so technically savvy that it makes it hard for me to believe that none of these kids that they reeled in would be smart enough to like plug in a phone to a computer and transfer images or photos or anything like that. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that's just my mind going way off the rails or if that's sounds like, you know, um, what's that called? Like, uh, reasonable, you know what I mean? Or if they literally just provided these kids with these electronics so that they could say, Hey, you have to fly here. You have to go there. You have to do this. You have to do that, that kind of thing, you know? So that's why I said that, uh, and means of interstate foreign travel. So they all went, you know, and I'm sure they were probably, we already saw earlier in the other article about how they were talking about hotels in New York. I mean, sorry, excuse me, hotels in Europe, uh, France, Italy, like all these elaborate, you know what I mean? Fashion, 
the the places where fashion took place. So you could only imagine these kids getting very excited to go to Paris or go to, you know, Milan or go to Italy or Florence or wherever they went, you know? So I, I mean, that was like the ultimate, right? That was like the ultimate to, 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 um, to have that dream, right? Let me catch up on your comments before I have to toggle. So, okay. You said, um, let's see. You said it's not just the music industry and the fashion. Yeah. Movie TV. Yes. And Weinstein Nickelodeon. You're right. I, I totally agree. Nickelodeon was literally hiring uh, convicted ex. Well, yeah, you know, and also I want to say before I bring the lawsuit back up to, I don't know if you guys ever saw um, or anybody that watches this on the playback, if you ever saw, I've mentioned this movie a few times, but it's just because it comes, it pops up in my mind. But if you ever saw uh, as good as it gets, it was like an Academy award winning movie with like um, um, Cuba Gooding Jr., Greg Kinnear, Helen Hunt, and, the guy from The Shining, I can't remember his name, um, Jack Nicholson. Anyway, um, Greg Kinnear plays an artist, you know, a, a painting artist, and his publicist or manager goes out and finds these kids on the street for him to paint. So it makes it, you know, when they talk about these, you know, like, or even Ghislaine, I mean, when they did the documentary, right? And Ghislaine would just go out and drive around and find people. It makes perfect sense. You know, it's not just them holding casting calls or having kids line up in the mall to audition or whatever it was, you know? So it makes perfect sense. Um, it's like a serial killer who looks for trophies. Yeah. And from their victims like R. Kelly. Yeah, totally. And then also she said, uh, if they were scared and drugged, then I know I don't think recording was on their mind. <laughs> well, no, I just meant like, like a plan. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we look at, you know, you look at going back in time, you know, where, I don't know, maybe, maybe the earlier generations, even of the 2000s or the millennials, I don't know, maybe they just seem a little bit more trustworthy. I don't know. I just feel like, there's always this, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 maybe it's just depends on the person, but you know, it's like kids, like our friends having a plan. Like if something goes wrong, do you know what I mean? Like that. But I don't know. I could be wrong. You know, I really could be wrong. All right. Let's, let's uh, read a little bit more of this. It says Jeffries transported his victims. Um, let's go up a little bit. Jeffries transported his victims in inner. I wonder if I can blow this up a little bit more. There we go. I can blow it up a little bit more. Jeffries transported his victims in interstate and foreign commerce, including transportation to and from his mansion in the district. The Amicrombie and Fitch, um, uh, the Amicrombie sex F trafficking. I, I'm not supposed to say that, but I said it anyway. Venture transported victims across state border boundaries uh, and in foreign commerce between the United States and other countries. And then it goes into, uh, okay, so now this is this particular victim's story. Um, Jeffrey Bradbury was forced to engage in commercial S acts by means of force and fraud. So this is, it says, in 2010, David Bradbury was contacted through, see, this is what's scary. Like I was saying, I put my kids you know, when we went to a casting agent, we had a meeting and they told me to put my kids on this digital website, you know, so that when people were looking for kids, you know, or, or males, you know, of a certain age with certain hair color, certain eye color, they could just like swap through this, you know, portfolio type thing, album, whatever. And so that's very interesting how this says it was called www.modelmayhem.com. And look at, it says a credible website for professional models and photographers. So very interesting to me, you know, how, I don't know, these industries, it's like, they're just not even worth it. Not even at all. By a man named Gilbert Bell, who presented himself as a manager and agent for young stars. Bell informed David Bradbury. He's the main focus, I think, in this uh, lawsuit, even though it's a class action. But it says, uh, Bell informed David Bradbury that he wanted to introduce Bradbury to someone powerful in the fashion industry to help advance his modeling career. 
So he was already, you know, he already had his go sees his, you know, as a model, you have to have a go see. It's called a go see and it's a card that you present, or at least we were told that, you know, it's like your photo. And then on the back of the photo, I believe it's like your resume or whatever, if you've worked with anyone. Um, I think that's what they're called. I, I know. I think it's called a go see card. Anyway, I, I went to so many seminars. I can't remember, but my kids had an attitude, so <laughs> they didn't want to work with them, but they, they really wanted my oldest son to, for a lot of shows for Bill Bong, for a lot of the skate, uh, like surfing type of, um, brands. And David just always had a attitude. He just always did. You know, they didn't want to work with him because he was, they told him he had to walk a certain way and he was really like fussy about that. And he was like, I don't want to do this stupid shit. It's dumb. He used to say that, you know, and they were like, we can't work with a kid like this. So anyways, um, so he wanted, so Bell informed David Bradbury that he wanted to introduce Bradbury to someone powerful in the fashion industry to help advance his modeling career. Bell further informed Bradbury that if things went well during the meeting, Bradbury would in, be introduced to the owner. So Bell caused David Bradbury to believe that he had the potential to be a Abercrombie model and that he was being scouted for a legitimate casting. Instead, Bradbury was informed that prior to the meeting, the owner of, of Abercrombie, he would do an initial meeting with a man who was independent model scout for Abercrombie and who would evaluate whether he was fit and who reported directly to the top executives at Abercrombie. So this sounds like it was um, Jeffrey's partner. I don't know. Allegedly, I don't know. I wasn't there, but it sounds like it was his partner. Um, the individual held himself out to be a working on behalf of Abercrombie as a model scout and was in constant communication with Abercrombie CEO Jeffries. During the initial meeting, the scout told David Bradbury that he would need to get casting photos uh, taken with framed Abercrombie photographer Bruce Weber, who was since who was since exposed as an actual predator himself. So God, it's just like they're all like they're all this way. They're all it's just, and we I mean not to say that we didn't know that this stuff went on, but at the same time, it's like. Diddy's not the only one. I mean, you know, it's just, it just is what it is. What disturbed me about the Diddy case is just all the models and everything that were involved in it. I don't know, especially Naomi Campbell. I just, I mean, not, not to say that I didn't, not to say that I didn't know much about her before then I knew she was trouble, but I'm just saying like all the people in the model and fashion industry that supported a lot of the stuff that went on. The scout reiterated what Bell had left led David Bradbury to believe that this was a big opportunity to get real, to get a real start in modeling in the modeling industry with one of the most popular brands in the world. Um, he remembers, hold on. He, re Oh gosh, it's going so fast. It won't. He remembers thinking that it was like this person was selling fame and the price was David Bradbury's compliance. As the scout began to touch David Bradbury inappropriately, he told Bradbury that he wasn't supposed to do this, but he just couldn't help it. Jesus. This reminds me, wasn't there another, wasn't there another like Netflix, Mel, you'll know. Wasn't there another um, mini series on Netflix about another designer? It wasn't, wasn't there another, I know there was, I think he was blonde. There was another designer that this kind of story happened to, right? Uh, <laughs> plan that you're Gen X. Um, yes, good. Okay, thank you. Who was it? Put it in the comments so that anyone that watches this on the playback will know. I, this story is so common. It's like, it's not really appalling or it's not really like, you know, it's not really anything that's like, we don't know about, I guess. I don't know. I just feel like the most scary and the most crazy like story was star 80, the girl that played star 80 
and her boyfriend. And oh man, that was such a crazy story. Anyways. Oh, and then there was the story of Gia. Remember that? And uh, I think Angelina Jolie played Gia. Remember that? Another 80s or 90s model that had a bad outcome. Anyway, he then made it clear to David Bradbury that he held the key to the next level of Amber Crombie process and that unless he let the scout perform oral on him, Bradbury would not be meeting with Amber Crombie or its CEO. <laughs> I mean, if someone told me, if I was a dude and someone told me that if he tried to touch me and said, and, and, and also said, I just can't help myself. This reminds me if you guys have ever seen, okay, let me take a break again. Let me, let me sidebar. I always say sidebar, but if you guys ever saw, there's a show on, um, you know, after the whole Matt Lauer thing came out, right. They came out with that show. It's called the morning show. And Steve Cottrell played the guy that was supposed to be like the imitation character of, or the example character of uh, Matt Lauer. And it was Steve Cottrell, I think. And um, I think that's his name, Steve Cottrell. And the guy from The Office. And um, in the morning show, there is the head of the network. And there's a girl that ends up having to like every, anybody knew that like if they got invited up to the top penthouse floor of the building that it would be like what was really going to happen right and i remember there's a scene in that it's like in the first season i think because there's two seasons i wonder if they're going to bring back a third there might be a third maybe i'm thinking they maybe there's a fourth i don't know anyways um she's invited up to the top penthouse and the head of the network is waiting for her and she's in like a mini skirt suit thing but then she goes in there to talk to him. And I can't remember the guy that plays the head of the network. He's like a famous guy. But he tells her to get undressed or something or some kind of craziness. And he wants her to do something to him. And he's like 70 something. It's so gross. And she does it. And I'm like, how is this possible? Like, I realize it's just a story, but. I mean, this shit has been going on for decades in all kinds of industries. So it's not like it's weird or something. But it's just crazy to me, you know, it's just crazy, like, especially, I don't know, I feel like of all, I don't know, music and music and fashion is like, I don't know, acting too, right? I don't know. It's all the same, I think. I think it's just all the same, no matter what, right? It's just all the same. Like, these are all fucking Fruit Loops and crazy fucking ped pedos. They're all pedos, all of them. Um. You said he's in prison in Canada for five years. Uh, oh, the guy from Netflix, you mean? Um, let's see. And then you said, I can't remember the name, his name. Yeah. And then um, there's, you said, Love Gia, great movie. She was gorgeous. Yeah. So I remember Star 80. Like if you ever saw Star 80, like that was a crazy one too. But there's just so many model store. Like modeling to me is not like crazy shocking, I guess. You know, it's just not music. I think the biggest thing that's the most been appalling of all this stuff, like falling down, all the house of cards falling down in every industry is the children. But I mean, we know children have been not, I mean, it's not unusual to find out about children, to be honest, as gross as, and as vile as it sounds, we know children have always been the focus of, you know, terrible, terrible things. But I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like the more that I think of Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy Combs, I feel like he's scarier because of the dressing the kids up like dolls and, you know, and all of that and feeding fetishes and, you know, poop in one like department of the mansion floor, uh, allegedly. And then like, uh, children allegedly, um, and then there was something else the girl said. She said something else. Remember when she was sitting on that stool on white underbelly? She was talking about um, like there was another fetish there. But then and then you hear the hotel staff talking about what it's like to clean up these messes. So you could only imagine like even in this instance with this lawsuit, you could you could imagine the staff, you know, and what they see and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's crazy to me, you know, but the only reason why I went into this particular lawsuit as well, if you see this on the playback is 
because the minute that I saw the articles of that, this guy was let out on bond. And then I saw the post on Twitter X about the bond, you know, that they're arguing that it's a judge error and that, um, $50 million is enough to be honest. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I got nervous at first, you know, when I first jumped online, but now that I think about it, like I still feel like it's a panel of three judges coming up. So it's going to be a trio, but at the same time, I don't think, I think when they look at the transcript that we read yesterday in full, you know, I mean, I had like a hundred people in my room yesterday listening to that, which was amazing. But also I feel like it was really important to read that bond um, hearing because without it being televised, like Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, we just don't really know what was said. And for me, I wanted to hear what did the government say and what did Diddy's team exactly say and like how silly did his <laughs> argument sound. And to me, reading that to everybody verbatim didn't sound like it was uh, a question of the bond, you know? And I think even when they read the transcript, and that's why I felt it was so vital to read the original hearing bond uh, bond transcript is because the first judge says you can't be trusted. You just literally can't be trusted because if you're asking for the same security team to be, to watch over you while you're, you know, while you're on house arrest or whatever, you know, and your, and your family is also involved in lawsuits all around everywhere, even though they're allegedly, and no one's been convicted of anything. How are we supposed to think that regardless of how much money you put up, you're going to be trustworthy, like literally. Like just because you flew to New York and you're saying, hey, you're going to be available for us to come and get you. I don't think that mattered. I think what they were worried about more or less. Well, you had two judges. You had one that was worried about the flight risk first, that that first one. And then the second judge, Judge Carter, was not necessarily worried about the flight risk. He was worried about the witness tampering, which was the 120 some on text messages and so forth. And then there was a... um. There was an appeal, I think, to the second one, right? And then, I mean, because we haven't gotten to the third argument yet, and then now there's an ed evidentially hearing stuff, you know, in regards to Diddy. So there's a lot there, and this one is more like, or in, unless there's more details that we just haven't heard, but this one sounds more just like it was, you know, I mean, it's still a circus ring. We can see it's still fuckery. It's still like, you know, they wanted these kids to be basically as slaves, you know, and that's it. They wanted them to be in bondage. But at the same time, I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like Diddy's was just, Diddy is more. He's, he's just more grandiose in my opinion. That's, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm underestimating Amacrombie, but just with the tunnels and, you know, and these kids and the fetishes and all that stuff. But I don't like the fact that these people are like literally against, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't like the fact of all this substance stuff that, I mean, and I'm not just talking about, you know, getting the kids to do or getting these young adults to do substances at a party, you know, cause like, I think that's the difference. I think that this one, I don't know. I feel like they're hand in hand because this guy wanted these kids to sign, these young adults to sign something without being able to read it. And then he wanted them against their will to be injected with something. They didn't even know what it was. But then when you think of Diddy and, you know, his requirements were you have to sign this NDA. This NDA will go 70 years. It's 20 years plus or 70 years, whichever comes first, if you open your mouth. And two, you have to consent that you're going to drink this drink. You're required. If you walk into this room with everyone, the special room, including these um, celebrities. And as you can see, I put our mystery celebrity couple on my background tonight. You know, I put my, you know, they're talking about this mystery celebrity couple, right? That entered the room. So I put my little masked Venetian uh, circus, circus goers right there on the left-hand side of the screen. But I mean, 
Yeah, I just, I, it's hard, you know, it's hard to know because you don't know. Children, I mean, it was going on for, yeah, exactly. And uh, his was, his is worse because he also had some legal trouble beforehand. Yeah, I, yeah, I do believe that. I mean, I, I agree, you know, I mean, I think, I think, I think what's happening with the Amber Crombie thing is I think it's just, I think Johnny Depp, to be honest, opened up the door for males to feel braver in, in regards to any abuse period. I think Johnny Depp opened that door for men or boys or young, you know, anything, minors to not be afraid to say something. And I also think, um, and I'd love to get your opinion on this, Mel, if you're still here. I, I also think this has to do with the sensationalism as well. I saw after I did my stream yesterday, I, uh, was able to go on Hulu and there was quite a few things happening of the, on the Menendez brothers right now and the new generation kind of being able to evaluate that case. And, uh, the case is really getting ripped apart because of the fact that they disregarded the, uh, the incidents of these young males, you know, being subject to abuse and how the, uh, the prosecuting attorney was like not focusing on that. I mean, the first, obviously the first trial before it was a mistrial was focused in on that. And I think that they said at that time in history that it was more like exposed, you know what I mean? Like it came out and it became a thing and it was something that was never kind of really focused in on, in terms of having empathy for men or kids or boys. But also I just think that when the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial came about, I think that it just also opened the floodgates for males to come forward and not be so afraid in in some way. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. There could be another case I'm missing, but I still feel like the things that these people in these different industries are exposed to, I don't know. I just, to me, I don't know. I, it seemed like a lot of the attorneys on these mainstream outlet, you know, media outlets, when they're interviewing these uh, attorneys to see what their opinions are and stuff. It seems like they're going to be arguing in court about how these in, in Emma Crombie's case, it was 18 to 25, you know, and I think that's also they it's, there's been mention, and I don't know if this is a fact yet because the trial's not here yet, but there's been mentioned as well with Mr. Combs that they're going to argue that everything was consensual female or male. And, you know, I don't know. I just, it's just, it's a lot, you know, this whole thing, it's like every day, arrow after arrow of things coming out and, you know, this whole thing is just unleashing and boy, oh boy, did we, did any of us really think that Cat Williams saying 2024 is going to be the year of reckoning is crazy that it's actually coming about that way. But also I want to say as well that there was a clip that was, uh, that was, I guess, floating around, if you will, of, um, you know, because there's this whole thing with the presidential election as well, you know, and I don't really want to get into po politics on the channel, but there was a clip of Joe Rogan going around having some conversation about the election with uh, Dwayne Johnson. And I'm like, why are they focusing on this clip? Because Dwayne Johnson, we know from the fires with Oprah, is not in the best light either. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that anybody wants to be talking about Jim. I mean, I just, I, it's so funny because now all the people that you really didn't think anything of, whether you were involved or cared about Hollywood at all. Now, every, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I think it's actually an awakening because I feel like even the general population, anytime you see a movie now or you see a commercial or a TV show, it's really hard to, to just see the fictitious story they're trying to sell without like wondering if that particular celebrity is involved in something heinous. I don't know why that's jaded me in such a way. It's probably because I'm doing pop culture, you know, and I'm so enthralled in a lot of this. A lot of people don't really care too much about celebrity, you know, uh, scandals and things like that. But at the same time, I feel like it's just crazy. Oh, and now there's also something going around with um, the bounty hunter guy also. I'm like, what is happening? It's just like everywhere. It's like everywhere. If they're involved in 
commercial studio productions, period, whether it's TV, you know, film, music, anything. It's like crazy. I just, it just floors me. It floors me all together. All right, let me see what you're saying over here. Let's see. And then I'll go back to the lawsuit because I want to see these pictures in the lawsuit also. We're covering the Amicrombie, uh lawsuit. Uh, let's see. Um, you said, oh yeah, right here. You said, I just want to know how Kat knew 2024 everyone will be exposed. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I, like I said, I wonder if he just had, I don't know, maybe he had a reading or something. The Menendez and their dad was a big shot. Yeah, for RCA. And it's not a far reach that they were getting worked over too. Yeah, well, you know, I think also because it was music related as well, you know, and he was a big music producer, they said, or something like that. So that was interesting. Uh, Vince is the owner of WWE. And then she also said wrestling, tons of scale. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, you know what? Actually, for those of you that are WWE um, uh, fans, especially if you're around my age or over 40, uh, I've always wondered about China. I've always wondered about China. She she passed away mysteriously in her apartment. She was vlogging and she was in good shape. She was they said she was in good spirits and stuff. And you never know, you know, what the cameras are actually telling you on the surface if that's really what's going on behind closed doors. But I wondered with China. I I don't know if you guys know who China is, but she was a wrestler also in the in the forefront of um you know the uh wrestling world and i just i just remember i re i liked her i liked her and she had her rise and fall kind of time and then she ended up uh, kind of in a bad way i think and then she was kind of coming back and she was getting healthy uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And she was vlogging. I remember that she lived in a small apartment and she was like vlogging every day and she was showing what she was eating. And then before you knew it, she was just gone. And it just mysteriously, I don't know, maybe she had secrets. Maybe she knew things who the hell knows anymore. Right. I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, back to the lawsuit. Um, you said huge wrestling for HHH really screwed her over yeah you know i mean there's so many there was so many wwe fans too back in the 80s and stuff like that you know and so many people and it makes me wonder like what really went on in that world also because it was such an aggressive world you know what i mean and there was so much going on with i don't know how they kept in shape and so forth right you know so crazy crazy stuff anyway so let's go back to this so it says as uh, the scout began to touch Oh yeah. Okay. So we know he touched him in pro inappropriately. We know that they bribed him with money. All of them, actually. I don't think that really mattered who it was. I think all of the, the class action were, Oh wait, but it says something right here. It says, uh, David Bradbury perceived this individual. So this was, he made it clear to David Bradbury that he had the key to the next level in Amacrombie and that if he, so it was like an interview process. It was like, to me, this lawsuit is like, an interview process. Like, so they went, they scouted the, the guys between 18 and 25. They promised them big modeling careers. And then they told them, well, you have to go through this like meeting process. And I think it reminds me also what pops into my mind randomly right now is like Gaga, you know, when she said she ended up having like certain auditions and stuff like they have her on camera, like saying that when she went for a studio audition or something. She had to take her clothes off or something crazy, you know? So it's like, this is like a standard procedure to me in all the industries. You know, if you just do this, if you just do that, you know, you've got this interview, then you got to pass this interview, then you got to pass this, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. So it sounds like um, David Bradbury perceived this individual to be a gatekeeper. So and we've heard about the gatekeepers all over, you know, we've heard about those. So, uh, uh, so this, this, particular Bradbury situation that we've been talking about took place in 2010. And so, um, I'm going to go down a little bit on the lawsuit and I'm going to, so yeah, see, so Bradbury, it says eventually after he went through the, the levels, David Bradbury was flown to Nice, France at the direction of Jeffries, where he was again forced to perform things. So he was, it was like, 
if you do this, I'll give you this. If you do this, I'll give you this. If you do this, I'll give you this. And it just went on and on and on. And it was just crazy. It was crazy. And so they're going, they're going after these three people for, you know, for all of these alleged, um, acts, you know, and it's, I, the only thing is, is I was curious. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about, I still have yet as a person that's covering pop culture and these true crime kind of things or things that are falling into true crime. I'm, I'm still trying to understand the way S trafficking works in terms of traveling and stuff like that, because I, I thought they said something about that. It had to be minors or something like I know, I know that, um, that certain levels of the S trafficking like has to do with them flying them from place to place for money or something. I don't know. I'm not an attorney, but it just seems very interesting to me, like this whole S trafficking thing and like how it operates, you know, but I wanted to kind of go down here cause there was a couple of pictures and I wanted to know. So they followed the money. It looks like this right here in 205, the money trail into Jeffrey's corporate Amacrombie accounts, personal accounts was a dead giveaway. So there it is. They followed the money. But in Diddy's case, I feel like it's follow the photos. <laughs> in my opinion, I feel like it's follow the photos, follow the photos of all the people that were, that he took, you know, these award shows, events and everything else. Crazy. Um, among the young men whose S trafficking and S abuse participated in benefited from. So yeah, it was, you know, and here's the class action allegation. David Bradbury brings this action against this guy. All men who were essentially abused or trafficked by Emma Crombie, um, Michael Jeffries, Matthew Smith, and any other associates. And Originally, in the beginning of the document, it said over 100 people, but then it said 15. So I'm not quite sure. But it looks like all the acts were very, very similar to Diddy. Just a little bit different, but, you know, pretty much the same. Because once they were flown to a destination, they couldn't go anywhere. They were trapped, allegedly. I mean, that's what it sounds like, because this is a lawsuit. It's They weren't convicted of this crime yet. They, well, they're charged now, but they're not convicted yet. So this eventually came to light after a year's time. So there was a couple of photos in here, I thought. Let's see, cause of action. Maybe it was just that one photo. I'm trying to look, sorry, I'm scrolling through this fast. Um, class, at, yeah, the class members count to. So this is, I think, now I think the, the indictment against Mr. Jeffries right now is 10 pages. And I do believe it's very, very almost identical to Sean Puppy P. Daddy Combs is. Um, but I was trying to see. I thought there was some. Throughout the entirety of his recruiting process. Right here. Throughout the entire of his recruiting process, Jeffries and his co-conspirators were purporting to act on behalf of Amicrami, including but not limited to the following. So offering what the victims believe to be legitimate opportunities, proving victims the opportunity to meet with the Amicrombie professionals, including the photographer, which was also in on it, apparently, having models scouted, providing victims clothing, providing victims gift cards, and then having staff at the S trafficking events dressed and Emma Crabby clothes. So it was a whole man. It was a whole orchestration. It sounded like crazy, huh? Just nuts. I mean, I mean, it's not, I feel like, I don't know, as much as being as, as much things are being unleashed right now, it's not like appalling, right? It's not appalling anymore, you know? And I never, when I brought this up, if you're saying this on the playback, I had never intended on reading this verbatim. I just was looking because this um, lawsuit. Um, sorry, this lawsuit, I'm trying not to, um, so much. This lawsuit had photographs, but 
even the photographs, I mean, a lot of the photographs that like News Nation and some of the outlets were using were basically just like on Google. Like if you look, you can see a lot of the male models and such. So it just, it's kind of just bringing out his behavior, Mr. Um, all the three parties involved. So Abercrombie knew and was in reckless regard of the fact that it was Jeffrey's pattern and practice to use the channels and instrum instrumentalities <laughs> of interstate and foreign commerce, you know, to harbor, it says right there, to recruit, entice, solicit, harbor, provide, obtain, and transport young men for purposes of causing those acts. And it just goes on and on and on, you know, for the S trafficking violation or whatever. I was just, I guess that's the only photo. I'm just going through there this fast. Where was the photo? There was one photo in here, I thought. Because this is the actual lawsuit. And what's really what's really interesting about this experience, I sorry, I know I'm scrolling fast, you guys. I, I apologize. But um the the really interesting thing about this is that it's it's been, it's like just shy. It's just shy of a few days from the original filing. So this filing right here, I believe was done on October 27th, 2023. And he was indicted yesterday on October 22nd, 2024. So it was almost a year to the date that this particular class action lawsuit, civil lawsuit was filed against him. And again, you know, he was not charged with these allegations. I mean, he was not convicted of these allegations in the civil lawsuit. Um, but obviously, you know, so this was basically part of it. It says by 2003, the direction of Wexner and Jeffries, the over estualization of the brand was speaking for itself. So basically, I mean, they had no clothes on. They literally ended up like, what's the point of having an Abercrombie line if no one's going to be wearing the clothes? <laughs> and you know what? I don't know if Abercrombie also was one of those um, lines. When I think of Abercrombie myself being in the age I am, I feel like it reminds me a lot of like the Gap or like uh, what's another one that was like that American Eagle Outfitters, you know, like that kind Levi's like that kind of every single time I think of like the primary 80s when like when I was a kid, uh, I think of like Valley Girl, you know, and I think of all the John Hughes movies because we literally saw those in theaters. It's so funny to like my kids were only able to see it on video or VCR or DVD or whatever, but we saw those movies Friday the 13th, you know, all those intense movies. We saw those actually in the theater. So it's such a interesting thing to see the new generations kind of discover those movies, you know, but let me catch up on your, uh, let me catch up on your, um, comments. So let's see, let me go back. Hopefully uh, you guys on the playback will also chime in. Mel is present with me now. Uh, let's see. So she said, let's see. Um, you said, yes, children. And I mean, it was going on for all. And then you said, uh, his is worse. He also had some legal trouble. And then you also said, I just want to know. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I think I went back. I think I already did these ones, but this one, you said the Menendez brothers, their dad. Yeah. I remember that RCA. And then you also said also what he was doing with Vince McMahon. Oh, that's right. Star search. Yeah. Cause that goes back to Britney days. Remember that you're right. Vince is the owner. Oh, I see. Okay. Now it makes sense. Now it totally makes sense. Yeah, and then we started talking about China. That's right. Huge wrestling. Yeah. And then you said, you also said, uh, check into Vince's lawsuit. I will. I definitely will. And then you also said, uh, my kid was into that and Hollister. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know, today it reminds me of um, today's clothes. Like the kids talk about a store. Oh, what's that? It's like an affordable store that the kids go to today, it's called, um, it's a lot like the gap. It's supposed to be affordable. What's it called? It's not Hollister. It's like, like I, Zara, isn't Zara very familiar, uh, similar as well, but there's another one. It starts with an H I think H. Oh, what's it called? It starts with an H the, the clothing store that the kids go to. It's, uh, I, can't, I can't remember it, but it's called, it's, it starts with an H. Um, 
I can't remember it right now, but it's very gappy. That store. Um, H and M. That's it. That's it. Yeah. H and M. I mean, in my day it was, uh, and you might remember this. I don't even know if they're still in, 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 um, in, in business, but in my day it was, uh, express clothing and, uh, cause in the, in the, let's see, I got divorced in, uh, 99. And then when my kid, when I had my second kid in 93, it was, uh, Lane, uh, not Lane Bryant learners. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's can remember learners, but there was learners and there was wine stocks way back in the day. We're talking seventies. There was, um, uh, let me think, hold on. I got a good brain. Uh, there was, God, there were so many stores in my day. Guess you're right. There was, uh, uh there was another big famous one. It was, um, Lane Bryant's been around a long, long time. And so, you know, Torrid came out, uh, the kids, you know, and then there was Spencer's and uh, hot topic came around and stuff like that. But I was talking about like more like express clothing and, um, God, there was such, I mean, Victoria's secret started having stores. Remember that? And then my son worked at a store too. It was called, um, uh, Oh, I can't remember the name of that store. It was like a skating store. Um, zoomies. There was a store called zoomies also. But there was a store my son worked at that, uh, that was like, mm, like, let's see. I think my oldest graduated in 2012 and, uh, Nick, my son, Nick was, uh, he did like ROTC or whatever at one of those stores in the malls. But yeah, there was like, remember, uh, way back in the day, you older generation will remember this, but remember Mervyn's like Mervyn's turned into Kohl's. Pack Sun. That's it. Pack Sun. Yeah. Nick worked at Pack Sun. You're right. You're so right. Yeah. And then there was um there was like shoe stores and stuff, you know, like the Foot Locker's been around forever. Big Five's been around forever. You know, but yeah, I mean, and the biggest thing, you know, with like the gap and American Eagle Outfitters and places like that, you know, when you were when I mean in the day that they're talking about for Amacrombie was like, um, you know, the big thing was whoever was in the window. Do you remember that? When you would go to the malls and the pictures were literally on the windows. You know, it's like F.A. Schwartz. Remember that was the biggest toy store at the time. Toys R Us was big at that time. You know, and Toys R Us, I think, just had to close its doors, what, a few years ago. And we got Hobby Lobby now in places like that. But it's interesting, like, to go back and, like, think about the fashion industry and how it's evolved you know, and just shopping and the internet and the whole thing. So it was very, you know, like going into, there was another store also that was super like popular and, but it was really affordable. Um, it was super popular. Gosh, darn it. And it was in every mall. It was a girl's store. I want to say it started with a W wet seal. I think it was called wet seal. So there were certain, you know, I remember when I was a kid also, I was like 14 or 15 in, um, cause I was class of 88, but it was, uh, cause it was called Cosmo or Cosmo. Um, oh, I can't remember, but it was like when in my day, granny boots and, you know, brooches and button shirts and things like that were in, but this is really relevant because it, it goes back, you know, like I remember journeys, journeys, shoes as well. So when you think about these things, you know, when you think about peach, Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy Combs, and you think of Amicrombie, and you think of Macy's, and, you know, all these stores that were like the big showcase stores as you walk through the mall, you know, for those of us that grew up at that time and saw, you know, these particular music and fashion and uh, movies and things like that and how they became, they evolved over time. And, you know, when you, I mean, in our, in the 80s and the 90s of this time, malls were everything you know, before the internet and, um, shopping and stuff like that. So it's very interesting to read these, uh, these lawsuits and see, you know, how these things, I mean, even if you go back, like even in P Diddy's career, like you can go back and like, think about like how they marketed new artists, you know, and they would have like shows in malls, you know, they would perform 
I think even Britney Spears and In Sync, and there was a couple of other. I think it even Christina Aguilera, if I'm not mistaken, had shows in like malls, you know, and they would have casting calls as well, like for Disney shows and things like that. In in malls, malls were everything. So for a long, long time, you know, that took place, and until we started having, I feel like it was not just the pandemic. I feel like I feel like malls and fashion and some of the marketing in terms of the way we remember it when you're talking about Amacrombie and Fitch and P Diddy and going back to the nineties and you hear all these, well, I mean, they probably call us old timers now, but if you talk about these, this era when they're going back and they're talking about these times when movies and fashion and fragrances and department stores and all this stuff was a big deal. There was, um, so much that children, you know, the way that they would find these people, like I said, casting calls, you know, approaching kids at, uh, at, uh, concerts, you know, and they had just so many ways like crazy, you know, and nowadays they have for like the social media influencers, you know, even up to like four or five, six years ago, they had like, you take the social media and YouTube and, um, Instagram and things like that, you know, they had meet and greets, they called them or whatever, you know, and a lot of times, you know, they would like scout kids, you know, so it's like, it's crazy, like the way that times have evolved and all this stuff that's happening. So it's very, it's very, it falls in the line, like about all these celebrities and, and how they don't act alone. You know, they have teams and, you know, when they go to Vegas and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then it makes you wonder as well, you know, a lot of times it used to be very, like when you think of Justin Bieber, even you think of all these people that got backstage, pa backstage passes and you had groups and groups of people excited, you know, to meet people. And it's just, to me, it's appalling as well to see social media influencers now on the red carpet and how they're all connected. And, um, uh, now you're even starting to hear social media influencers being affected by what they report when it comes to celebrities. It's really crazy. Like, so I feel like it all kind of connect, you know, it's, oh, let me play my, it all kind of comes out like, like this. Where is it? Hold on. It all kind of comes out like this. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it, you know? And then this whole fuckery thing just makes me think of this. <laughs> and I, I also, I, you know, when, as my room grows, I'm going to start playing my favorite of all. And Mel, you'll know this one. Cause I, y'all, if you see this on the playback, I know Mel personally, but like, uh, this is my favorite one right here. Um, let me see. Hold on one second. I have to, I have to play this for her. Cause I know she's going to, she's going to love it. Um, well, first of all, let's just like all of these pedos are just, <laughs> that's what I think of the Kardashians anyway. Uh, but this is what I think she'll know. Let's see. Hold on one second. I, I have to find it. It's like, it's got some random, it's got a random name. Is it this one? Oh, no, wait, that's, do you, do you remember that? Hold on one second. I, I have this thing I got from. Maybe it's this oh, one. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> I got, I started get, I downloaded sound bites for my, for my show. Uh, maybe it's this one. You're a bad man. You're a very bad man. <laughs> if you guys are Twilight Zone fans, you'll know what that, what that came from. I was, get, I, I'm yet to get, my name is Talking Tina and I'm going to, you know, but I, I didn't know if YouTube would let me do that. But anyway, it's just been crazy, like all this stuff that I've been covering and all this stuff I've been looking at, except for with the exception of that Diddy call that's going around right now, you know, on um, TikTok. I don't I think it's AI, to be honest. I don't, I don't really think that jail call from Diddy is true. But, you know, I want I want to close with this because I've been online for two hours. But I do want to say this for any of you guys that actually listen to this, um, you know, and caught this on the playback. Uh, I don't, I'm very disturbed by a lot of these videos. I keep sending my goddaughter all these videos about um, kids getting, well, for, there's two things. One is I'm getting very disturbed about school situations happening right now. You know, people going up to the office saying that their 
someone's dad or someone's mom or someone's aunt or uncle, that makes me very like terrified. Also, there is something going around where there's a lot of TikTok videos out, out, uh, out and about right now talking about children getting some viral infection and they have a cough and the ERs and the doctors are not paying much mind to it. And it's, excuse me, turning out to be double pneumonia. And that's very scary. I mean, you know, my, my, my child had double pneumonia at eight weeks. So it, you know, I know what it's like to be a parent of a, of a very, like a newborn all the way up to their adult life being, having, um, uh, am, uh, Amazon. <laughs> I don't know where my mind is. Um, asthma. So I don't know what's going on on TikTok or what's happening in the schools or anything like that. I mean, it's hard enough to like be nervous about your child, you know, attending public school and being in danger. But I do want to make light of that. So, you know, if you're on TikTok, you know, pay mind to those, um, those, some of those videos that are talking about kids getting sick right now. The last one I want to talk about before I go is, uh, I saw something saying that don't let your kids eat Publix lunches or something like that. That was interesting to me because, well, I don't know my kids, I keep trying to think back, you know, it was a whole different time when my children were in school, but I don't know if my kids ever ate public lunch. I think, I feel like I, I feel like I, um, made their lunch, but crazy, uh, you know, how the food is making them. I don't know y'all. It's all conspiracy theorist stuff. You know, it's all, I don't know. It's, it's all like allegations. You know, there's no facts with that. I, I mean, you know, anytime you go to the doctor, they'll tell you they're going to put off giving you antibiotics unless you absolutely need them. But it's been crazy, like out there, you know, in the world of new parenting and young parents today. So I just say, you know, be mindful of all the things around you and the kids and school and sickness and all that stuff. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So before we go, last thought. Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy Combs has another court happening. I'm just going to call it a happening because I don't know if it's a hearing or if it's a motion, um, you know, filing or whatever, but he's got another thing happening the 20 Friday. So I don't know if it's in regards to the evidence you're hearing or what, but it has to do with some of the motion filing um, going on. I think it's on the criminal side. It could be on the civil side. There's so many civil, you know, lawsuits happening. Who the hell knows? Uh, I do know that out of all the lawsuits that have been filed, two have been dis dismissed. So, but they're being refiled, I think. It's just the whole pseudonym, you know, random name thing. Um, but I do think that we'll see what happens, you know, with everything that's going on in uh, the P. Diddy world. There also, tomorrow when I do my stream, there's a video that I want to cover when I open. I was going to do it tonight, but I just totally got off track. But because I wanted to cover the Abercrombie thing because it's hot right now. But there, um, one of my favorite readers did a reader on did a reading on the Kardashians and if they're holding some any secrets or anything. Because he was saying that I guess he's a Kardashian fan. I am not, but he was saying that it's very unusual that the Kardashians are not in front of the camera, not flashing, not flexing right now. They're like totally, you know, just literally hiding under rocks right now. You know what else I found to be very interesting, you guys, before I go is that the Kardashian, you know, when you, I don't know if, and how many of you uh, subscribe to Hulu, but I do. And for a long time, even on like all my Alexas, I have eight Alexas in my house, literally eight. And I have three studio shows that are the ones with the screens. And I have, you know, like a dots in the bathrooms. They're the round circle disc ones. And then I have the taller ones like in the main rooms. And uh, one of the things that would happen when you go on uh, Hulu is you would see the Kardashian show promoted immediately. And all of a sudden, the Kardashians just are not, um, you know, promoted anymore. And that's crazy to me. You know, talk about staying out of the limelight. Also, there's been a little bit of trivia and, a, you know, I'll bring this up in tomorrow's stream. But I did not know, allegedly, I guess, that Mr. Sean P. Diddy Puff Daddy Combs is a uh, investor in Twitter X, you know, and so <laughs> it's just amazing how many people he's built relationships with and how many investments he's done. So apparently he and Elon are quite close, even though Elon doesn't want to admit that, I guess. And then my mom was saying, I said this yesterday, but my mom always calls me and says, you know, this 
man Trump swears he didn't have a, um, a relationship and doesn't even know who P. Diddy is. But yet when you go into Getty Images, there's like 100 pictures of him and Trump. <laughs> He's known Trump as, I mean, they've known Trump. Him and Kanye have known Trump for years and years and years. And so it's it's just hilarious. Like Diddy knows Trump's kids and everything. It's just absolutely like hilarious to me, like how Trump is acting like he doesn't know Diddy. I just think that's hilarious. But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you, Mel, for showing up. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys hear this on the playback or see this on the playback, please make sure you like the video if you enjoyed um, the content I brought tonight. I tried to do my best. I know I kind of thumbed through the, uh, the Amacrombie and Fitch um, lawsuit. I didn't go over the indictment because I really don't think um, it's necessary yet. I may do another show on him. I want to stay focused on Diddy, but I did want to bring this lawsuit out because it was just something that popped up looking for the indictment and I didn't realize it was going to come out. So if you guys have a chance, you know, uh, watch the episode, like the episode, share it with your friends if you're interested in hot topics and uh, celebrity scandals, but that's going to do it for me. So thank you guys so, so much. Thank you, Mel, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button on your way out. You guys, if you see this on the playback, I appreciate you so much. All right. I am going. Be good. Stay healthy. Be good. Be good. Be good. Stay healthy. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.